right, so this experiment is our limonene experiment. We're going to extract limonene um, from this orange. That you can extract limonene from lemons as well, but there's not as much content um, in the rind as there is in an orange. But it's what gives the orange that fragrant smell, and it's an orange oil that we'll extract. Okay. Um, typically, uh, to do extractions, you obviously have our solid, which is going to be from the orange rind, and you can use a liquid, um, some any kind of solvent really. But to do a green extraction, we're going to use a greener solvent. In this case, we're going to use supercritical CO2 or supercritical carbon dioxide, and typically it is. Um, a compound that will sublime. Okay, so typically um, this carbon dioxide goes straight from a solid to a gas. But in this case, we're going to basically force it to form a supercritical liquid, which basically has properties of both gas and liquid. Um, so we're going to use this um, or do that by uh, inducing some high pressure. Um, within a centrifuge tube. So not only will we be able to increase the pressure within the centrifuge tube, what we'll do is we'll have um, our orange rind right here and then we'll cap it with a nice layer of carbon dioxide. We'll cap it um, as that carbon dioxide starts to sublime and turn into gas, the pressure will increase. But we're also going to increase the temperature to access this supercritical state. And so we're gonna use a uh, plastic Erlenmeyer, plastic graduated cylinder, fill it with some warm to hot water. We'll insert our centrifuge tube into this grad cylinder, and hopefully we can not only increase that temperature um, of the dry ice, but also increase that pressure even more to access the supercritical CO2. So the first thing we need to do is pretty much the fun part. So we're going to just use this big grate um, area over here. We're going to grate off some orange rind. And you see that I'm just getting off the orange part. I'm not grating it so much that I'm getting to that white, that white area. Most of that limonene is gonna be found in the orange of the orange rind. So I want roughly three grams. After I finish grating this off, I will give it a mass, report that to you guys so you know how much we are going to start from before we do our extraction. So I want to take a measurement of how much of this orange peel is actually going to make it into our centrifuge tube. I weighed out approximately 3.8 grams, but there's likely to be some transfer loss. So I want to also weigh this out in the centrifuge tube as well. But the first thing that we have to insert into our tube is this uh, copper coil. And you see that we put some little mesh um, inside of it so that none of the orange peel makes it down all the way down to the bottom of the tube, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is put our tube in there and you see that it stops short of the bottom. Okay, so we're going to get that measurement as well. And then we will add our orange rind in the tube and then remask that. So now that I have my orange rind in my centrifuge tube, um, I've packed it in a way that it's still pretty loose and that's to allow room for that supercritical fluid to actually move down the rind and seep down past that mesh, okay? So you want to have room for that liquid to reach or to um, fall down to the bottom. So if you pack it too tight, essentially you just get some frozen orange peel. So we wanna leave room for that.
so I've got my dry ice here. Yes, this is the same stuff that goes in your pumpkins. Spooky. Okay, if I can make Dr. Wakefield laugh, then I don't care if you laugh. <laughs> so, I'm packing this in tight, and again, I'm making sure I'm not packing the orange rind while I'm doing this. But I want to build up as much pressure as I can, so I'm making sure I get a lot of dry ice in there. Remember, increase in pressure is directly proportional to our increase in our moles of our CO2. And I will then cap it. I've already filled this guy up with warm water, so I'm just going to put my centrifuge tube down in here. And we will wait and see. We just have some frozen orange up top. Time to unpack the orange and add more dry ice. super critical CO2 is able to pass through all of the orange rind and travel down to the bottom of the centrifuge tube. That way the oil that comes out will be able to reside in the very bottom. There is a little piece of orange rind that passed through and we'll get that out later. For each extraction, you'll notice that because this had a lot of pressure in it, when you release the cap, so we unscrew this, you'll notice that little hiss that will be indicative that we still got pressure we need to release from it, so be very careful. And then you can continue on with another extraction if you wish. You can see down here that we do now have some oil. It's mixed in with that solid piece, but you can see, it's not super clear, but I'll post a photo that we do have some nice oil at the bottom and it's very fragrant. Here we are on our third extraction you can see all I'm doing is I'm repacking the centrifuge tube each time with more dry ice. So I'm extracting the same three-ish grams of orange rind. And each time in between each extraction, I'm replacing the water right before I put it in here because I want to make sure that that water is nice and warm. The more you increase the temperature of the water, that helps us access that pressure and leads us to get a successful extraction. See that liquid traveling its way, making its way down, and sometimes we build up tons of pressure. And it seeps out the top, causing 
using it to spin, and you see that liquid, supercritical liquid that has both gaseous and liquid properties making its way down, passing through the mesh. And you see here, this time we've got our liquid that's giving a little bit of a yellow tinge, which will lead us to think that we will get a yellow oil as a result. So now that we've done those three extractions, I was able to pull out all of that orange rind and I very carefully took out that piece that settled to the bottom. So now you see we have just that little oil sitting at the bottom of our tube, in which we'll get a mass of, so we can get a mass by difference to get our mass of the oil only.